Hi, my name is Sean Olson. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to send an animated model from 3ds Max into the Source Game Engine. This lesson is not going to teach you how to animate your props. You have to learn that in other tutorials. This will show you is how to set it up with Wallworm to properly send into Source using different techniques. Now, this model was provided by a Wallworm user named Skyber on the internet. And if you play the animation, you'll see what happens here. The the door goes up and these bars go in through back and forth. And we'll scrub it slowly so you get an idea. So there's various components on here. Now this setup is animated with keyframes per object and there's several objects. This uh, piece up here is the door, bar, top, left. They all have different names. So they're separate objects. You can, when exporting your animations, use separate objects like this in one individual model and or you can use skinned meshes. In this setup, we're just using individual objects. So each one is animated through time. You can see the keyframes down here in the timeline of when that object moves. So this object won't start moving until frame 24. And now you see it's moving and these down here are the keyframes and they were already animated but that just I just want to point out that these are individual objects and they are not skinned to anything here and now we open up the wall where model tools we need to start by picking the root node I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about that and eventually I'm going to write more docs on the on the site but choosing your root node is actually kind of important in Wallworm, especially if you're using different settings that involve the origin. In this model, we're choosing this the main wall, the main piece of the door, as the root node, and it will create in the scene a Wallworm model tool helper. Basically, it's a spline shape in the scene that's always prefixed with WWMT. And whenever you want to get back to working with this model, you should use that helper as the object you pick in the future. If I close Wallworm and come back and open Wallworm Model Tools, to get back this model, I would choose Pick Model, and generally you should pick this helper. The reason I'm saying that is because eventually we're adding all of these other pieces, the bars and these other components, into the model but they are not actually tied to the helper in the same way the root node is so you may end up accidentally creating other helpers in the scene that you don't want so make it a habit that when you open up Wallworm and you come back to edit on one you already have and you pick model if you've already got a helper choose that helper now that I have this model set here I want to make some changes First, my defaults for Wallworm have Static Prop on. This is an animated model, so I need to turn that off. Next, in this model, for the purposes of uh, this demonstration, I want the Rotate Origin off also. I do want Use Local Origin on. Depending on your settings, you may want that off. And I'm going to do Calculate Origin in SMD, which is only used if you're using the Wallworm SMD exporter. I also want to do some optimization. I want to say this is opaque. Now, if I were to export this model, the only object that would be exported currently is this door piece. That's it, because it's the only part of this mesh and it's the only one I've assigned a wall worm. If I want these other pieces, like these bars, uh, the ceiling piece, if I want those added, I need to select those. So what I'm going to do is select all those objects I want to add. If I've selected things I don't want to add, I can deselect them by holding down the Alt key on the keyboard and then selecting them. And I don't want to re-add the big base here. So now I have eight objects selected, you can see over here. Eight objects. I want to add those as objects that are also exported into the model. In order to do that, in order to do that, there's a button right here, Add Cell. If I do that, 
it will add all of those objects into the wall or model tools helper. We click that and now all of these pieces will get exported. Now a quick way to see what objects are part of the model when you export is to deselect everything in the scene and then hit this button here select model. What it will do is select all the pieces of your current model and over here you can see there are nine objects. If you want to isolate those you can always do isolate selection and you can see here these are the pieces of the model that are going to get exported. So now we're going to export our model and see how it looks like in source. Let's bring it in here and we haven't exported the textures yet which we'll do here shortly. But the models in here and we have a couple issues. Not only are the textures missing, but there's no animation. If I go to the sequence tab, you'll see that there are no animations. And we have another issue is uh, we don't have a physics prop in here. So we need to handle all of those. But our model is now in source. And let's fix it and get it ready to go. Let's start with the easiest to export the textures. We click the export VTFs button and we're going to export all of the textures. The VTFs here are unchecked because I've actually already previously exported these and the materials haven't been exported yet so we're going to export those and because there's no VTFs you're not going to see any compiled dialogues and you can see another video on the full extent of setting up your materials. By doing that if we hit refresh on our model we should see our textures now. So that problem is now solved. Now we need to set up the animation. To do that in Wallworm, you go down to the sequences rollout and add a sequence. We're going to add two sequences here. One for open and one for, for close. Actually, close then open. Because it starts open and then it opens. It closes then opens. So what we need to do is look and see what at what frame the first animation stops. And we will go through here and see that at frame 41 the sequence is in. So let's add, let's call this close, we'll add the sequence, and it goes from frame 0 to frame 41. Now we need to add a new sequence. Add a new sequence called open and we'll do this one from frame 41 up to 108. We have two sequences now, the close and the open. We need to re-export the model, hit the export model button, and this time when the exporter goes through you're going to see that it actually lists the sequences we added close and open and if we refresh our model now we should see some sequences listed here idle close and open so if we tell it to close and play this you're going to see that the model now works and we change that to open it does the reverse Okay, now we come to the next part and that's getting animated collision halls. Now the final piece is to get the hall in and have it animated. I've already created the hall, so we're going to hide the model here and shut. It's very simplistic, very low poly. If you turn on edge faces, which is F4, you'll see that it's very low poly. However, when I hit play, it does not go with the model here and the reason I set it up this way is I'm going to show you the process we need to go through to actually get the model to export correctly. What we need to do is apply a skin modifier to each piece. So I'm just going to go through and, and apply a skin modifier. I'm doing them separate because I don't want them to use the same skin in this instance. And I'll skip ahead. So now each piece of my hull has a skin modifier. 
What I now need to do is skin each individual piece 100% to a single bone or object. In this case, I'm using the objects that I've already got as my model as the bones. And I'm going to unhide my model. and see the names of the pieces. So this top one up here, let me hide my hall so I can look at the names. Okay. This object is top bar right, top right. Or door bar, top right. So that's what I need this hall to be skinned to. Hit add. Door bar, top right. This next one, I need to do door bar bottom right. This hall needs to be skinned to door bar top left. This one needs to be skinned 100% to door bar bottom left. This large hall, the door, needs to be skinned to the door main. And these other two pieces. Alright, piston left. Now they should work. So now that I have all of these pieces skinned to those, pe those objects, if I hit play, you're going to see that it actually now, the hole follows it. Now even though the hole here, which I'll hide the original layer, and if you notice I didn't make the hole cover every single piece, um, like I didn't do the top piece up here, but that's fine, you can add it later, it's just demonstrating. Now even though I did this, we still haven't told Wallworm to export this as a hole. To do that, we need to open the Collision Model and Physics rollout. We need to select all of the hull pieces. There are eight objects here. We need to hit the Add CM Cell. That stands for Add Collision Model Selected. Add the selected objects as collision models. We click that button, and now they're part of it. So if I hit Hide or Show, you'll see that it, it knows those objects and if we show them and deselect them and hit select collision holes it will select all the pieces that are currently part of your hull. Now we still have one more thing and that's because this is a multi-piece collision hull that has little chunks, little pieces each section is a little convex piece but because there are multiple it's considered a concave hull. We need to check this option here, concave and here's another function for you to look at and learn about. If you hit hall count, if you click this button, it will count all the pieces and show them to you. There's currently eight pieces of your hall. Had we done concave and done that, there's only one because it will wrap all of this in one convex hall. But concave will make them individual pieces. Now we can export our model. And this time when the compile log pops up, you're going to see that it it lists the different uh, pieces of your mesh, of your collision mesh, and says that we have a jointed collision model with all these pieces. And when we refresh our model here, if we go to the render sequence and tell it to show the physics prop, and again I didn't make the chunk fill up the top or that top base, but we have these pieces now that match the general shape of our hull, of our model and because we skinned those hall pieces to the same animated pieces we already had if we choose close and run this you can see here that it's doing that animation again thank you to Skyber for letting me use this model um, in this demonstration again my name is Sean Olson you can learn more about me at my website, seanolson.net, 
And of course, you can always get the latest wallworm tools at wallworm.com. Thank you and have a good day.